Hello everyone, today we're going to be working on replacing a radiator on a 97 Toyota Camry. It's a four cylinder 2.2 engine and the radiator cracked on it and you can see this some sort of a band-aid my brother-in-law who owns this car put on it but it only goes so far so eventually I have to replace the radiator anyway. And here is the new radiator. We're going to make sure that they gave us the right thing at AutoZone here pretty quick. So first thing you want to do is disconnect the negative battery cable which I've already done and then we're going to go ahead and drain the radiator. You want to use an oil pan or some kind of container. That needs to be positioned underneath the car under what they call a drain cock. That's what it's called and it's located at the bottom of the radiator there. I'll try to zoom in and show you. So if you reach in, you can kind of see the uh, the handle on it, which I'm going to turn and drain the radiator in a couple of minutes here. Then after that, we're going to disconnect all the hoses, which includes the this top and bottom ones, and then all a couple of little hoses at the bottom there too. And then electrical connectors here. And then you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket to unscrew this, the uh, fan housings here. So, so as you can see, the coolant is draining through that drain cock located on the bottom of the radiator. And you only unscrew that by hand because it's all plastic. And if you use any kind of tool, if it's kind of stuck, then be really careful because you can easily break it. So once it's drained, like I said earlier, we're going to disconnect these hoses and be always always be prepared that you're going to get some more coolant out of those. And then we will go ahead and unscrew the uh, the uh, fan housings. And it's actually a fairly simple procedure. It's not complicated at all and can be done by anybody who's somewhat mechanically inclined. Recording? Okay, so if you look at the new radiator, you can kind of get an idea what to uh, expect as far as swapping hoses and stuff like that. So you got you got a uh, little hose that's going to be attached to this, and that goes to your uh, coolant tank. Uh, the top hose is here. You don't need to zoom in that bad. Just back up a little bit. Back up a little bit, Mike. Thank you. And then one big one on the bottom. Okay. Uh, two smaller ones will go here on the bottom. This is the drain cock that I was talking about. So you can unscrew it and tighten it by hand. That's all we got to do. And these brackets are of course for uh, uh, putting the radiator in place and uh, tightening things back up, which we'll uh, show you in a little bit. Okay, you can turn it off now. So I already disconnected the top hose, which is very simple. You just use a, some kind of pliers. Uh, then you disconnect this hose here and next thing I'm gonna leave the uh, zoom in on the bottom hoses there. I'll probably leave those until I take out this fan housings here which will give me access to the bottom hoses. And then now I'm gonna disconnect the electrical connectors. So for that you wanna put a little flat screwdriver inside there and pry it just a little bit just pulling this wider part here. It's kind of difficult to to do with holding a flashlight in your hand. Okay, there we go. So you want to pry it down towards the uh, the plug and not not to the outside. And same thing on this side. Let me uh, let me have that so I can I can show the folks what kind of connector that is. So you stick your screwdriver. Can you hold the flashlight? Right there. In here, and pry pry this thing inward. Okay. 
and then it pops right out. So now we are ready to take out this four bolts. There's two. There are two bolts on each side on top of these uh, the housing of the fan, and we have two fans here. And it looks like there are two independent fans, each in its own housing, and they're only attached on top with two bolts in each corner. Okay, and in the in the bottom, I assume there is just some kind of a uh, uh, connection that is not tight, so the uh, the fan can have some some room to uh, for vibration. Okay, when we get to that point, I will show you. So. We took out the top bolts here, and as you can see, the whole housing pops right out. Pretty cool system, actually. They're independent, so all you do is unscrew them, disconnect the connector, and you take them right out. I'm going to place each one on the side here, where it belongs, and get this hose out of the way. There's something else here that's not letting me pull this thing out, and it looks like some light here, Mike. Right here. There's another connector here. That is, where does that go? Looks like it goes to. Oh, that must be the uh, coolant temperature sensor in the bottom there. So that's where that connector is for. So. Same thing here. Let me get the screwdriver and disconnect that. Seems like a different type of connector though. Okay, so we figured out that this connector you can disconnect this with the same concept as the other ones. You just do something flat and short for that. So you stick it in towards the top of the uh, this outer piece here and pry it towards the uh, inside and then pops right out. And then you will have to lift this thing up and disconnect this little plastic clip here to uh, pull out the hole getting off move it over on this side Michael and then pull this whole thing out like that and now you can take out the fan okay so let's get some light and some video going here Okay, now we got two more hoses here. This will have to come out. It's also a plastic clip, so we'll have to squeeze it on the bottom or something and pull it out and then deal with that sensor or whatever that is. So let's take out all these hoses and then we will continue. So, uh just to show you here, we disconnected this hose from here, and this, these are the ones that run from your radiator to the transmission, so you're going to get a few drops of transmission fluid here. And then same with this hose here, and that's pretty straightforward, you just disconnect the, uh, the metal tensioners here, the brackets, and pull them back and pull the hoses off. Uh, then I pried out this little clip here okay and then on this one it's pretty simple you just pull on that and pull it off so you pull on the top you pull this top little lock down and then pull it right off okay so now we're gonna disconnect this top brackets here take out the radiator and then remove this sensor, put it on the new radiator, and then just do uh, the reverse of what we've already done. 
So to unscrew these you need a uh, 12 millimeter socket which of course if you can't figure that out you have no business fixing cars, right? Oops, that'll get me a couple of negative comments. There we go. Okay, set this thing aside so we don't lose them. My uh, brother-in-law Mike who put this priceless little uh, band-aid on this thing is doing a great job filming this project by the way. Right Mike? Okay, are we ready? Uh, did I not disconnect this hose? Are you kidding me? Okay, I want to try some. Okay, so what I actually did is I pulled the radiator up partially up and out of there so I can get access to this bottom hose because this easier this way. So now it's probably going to be some coolant in that thing. Well, I guess not. I'll try to uh, leave it up here so it doesn't drain anymore. There we go. And voila. Bow, chicka, pow, this pow. is your old radiator buddy. So Okay, we'll just uh, put them next to each other, make sure that they're exactly the same. So all we'll have to do now is unscrew this little sensor from here and transfer it to right here. Well, let's not do that actually. Okay, and then we'll of course... So, I just took this sensor coolant temperature sensor as it is. Took it out of the old one, put it in the new one and I just used a 19 millimeter wrench and uh, you want to tighten it of course but not too tight because you definitely don't want to strip the uh, thread inside that radiator, the new one. One thing I forgot to mention is you have to pull this little rubber mounts off of the old one and put them on the new one. Unless you want to buy new ones, which we didn't because there is no need to. There we go. And these brackets, of course, will go here and here once we put it in place. Okay, so I'm going to put it in there, attach the bottom hose, put it in place, and then we'll turn the camera back on. Okay, down there. So radiator is back in place and can you catch that see it's pretty self-explanatory but those rubber mounts on the bottom slip into the appropriate holes in the metal frame there just like that I already attached the bottom radiator hose okay the sensor is already in there so we can go ahead and uh, attach this electric connector to it there we go. And then once I put the, uh, well I can, I can attach this one here, just like that. And then the rest of them we'll worry about when we uh, are putting the uh, fan housings in. So let's go ahead and uh, screw this thing on. You are, you want to definitely be very careful not to damage any of these here because. If it if it leaks, you uh, might as well go get yourself a uh, new radiator. So let's connect these here, just like they were on the old one. There we go. When you zoom in that close, make sure people don't get dizzy. Okay, make sure it's not too close. Okay. So, of course, we're going to wait with connecting all these top hoses and connectors and everything until we are done putting in the, uh, the fans.
and not too tight so we don't strip any threads. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and put this one in first. Pretty nice and simple system actually. It's everything is, I mean these fans are independent with their own electrical connections and, and everything. So, which makes this whole process fairly simple. I always like working Toyotas, they're uh, very smart about making their cars. Okay, you can probably turn it off for me. Okay, so we put in the uh, passenger side fan motor, I mean the, uh, the housing. And then one thing I forgot to do is to attach this radiator to transmission hose, which is still doable. And that's what I'm doing right now. Let's go ahead and attach this one where it belongs also. Just like that. And of course some people recommend replacing all these bells and whistles while you do this project, but I don't really think it's necessary. Okay, we are ready to put in our second fan housing and this was just a little more complicated because of that sensor wire you got that you need to attach to, which is can you, uh, can you catch this mic? See that? Pull it back out and show you. I think we already showed this before, but so this is what we're going to do. We're going to attach this sensor wire to here, and then there's also one here. Got it? Okay. Let's do it then. I think we've got all the hoses, and except for the top radiator hose. So everything on the bottom should be good. Okay, that's that. Here. And we're ready to screw this thing in. Make sure that it sits where it's supposed to sit. Okay. And of course you want to tighten it, but not too tight. All this is plastic here. Okay, the connectors, they actually made them different colors here, so they're kind of dummy proof. So I want to put that back where it was, connect this thing here, this one goes here, and then let's do the other side while we're at it. So get it from the top here. You can see from the top. Yep. I mean, there's, it's nothing complicated, but... There we go. Okay, all we gotta do now is connect this thing here. Okay, 
and the top radiator hose finally. Did I miss anything, Mike? No. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, of course, check the bottom drain valve or drain cock is what they call it actually. And uh, what? What are you kicking me for? That's what they call it, man. It's called a drain cock. Okay, so that's closed. So now we're going to go ahead and fill it up. Even came with a new cap here. Very nice. Okay. Oh, it's actually open. Okay. So we're going to fill it up, run it, and we're filling it, this up. You want to do it nice and slow so you don't get any air bubbles in there. Okay. So what we did is we put the uh, we connected the negative battery cable back to where it's supposed to be, and then filled the radiator up with the uh, correct 50/50 coolant water mix. Unless you uh, buy it pre-mixed, if you got the extra money for that, sure that works too. And now we're ready to start the car. Okay. So once we do that, we're gonna put the uh, heater on hot, on maximum and run it, wait for it to uh, warm up make sure there are no nothing's clogged up, no air bubbles anywhere and the car is not overheating go ahead Mike so I've been running the car for about 15-20 minutes now our cooling system seems to be working fine, the thermostat is operating the uh, radiator fans are turning on and off as they're supposed to. So uh, I think we're good. We don't have any leaks. Everything seems to be working fine. And the uh, coolant temperature gauge on the dash is right at what it's supposed to be. So one thing I didn't mention before is you want to check the uh, transmission fluid level since we had a uh, little bit of a transmission fluid loss when we disconnected the uh, hoses at the bottom of the radiator. And so you want to check that, make sure that it's at normal operating level. And one more thing, when you drain the coolant, don't leave that container anywhere near pets, or where pets can access it, because it contains glucose and they are attracted to it. They will drink it and it's not going to be pretty. So, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.